Hello. Hi, and welcome to the stream. Thank you so much for tuning in. I was gonna say something, but... <laughs> Great intro. This is, this is exactly it. Hi! Hi, thank you so much for tuning in to watch my live stream. If you're new here, hi, I'm Pure Sona, you can call me Sona, and I'm your friendly neighborhood true crime VTuber, here to give you full body details. <laughs> Hello, Sona. It's almost strange seeing you here on a Monday. I know. I know. I'm sorry. I apologize. Like, I couldn't... Uh, I know that usually I have... My true crime streams are on um, on, on Sundays. Uh, but, yeah, I kind of overworked myself. So I had to postpone it by a day to make sure that I can actually finish my notes and, you know, finish everything and have everything ready. Uh, how's it going? Please remember to follow the chat rules. Don't give the mods hard a hard time. Uh, let them enjoy the stream as well. Okay, let me jump right into the case. Um, and let me open it by saying, by, by asking you, or pff, wait, <laughs> wait, because I got distracted. Man, I had this intro planned out. Uh, Joshua, thank you so much for joining Even Angrier Mob. Welcome. Uh, and, you know, I hope you enjoy the, the additional perks. You guys, we all have online friends. Some of them we've known and interacted with for years. Imagine, imagine this, imagine getting a message on Discord from one of these friends confessing to a gruesome murder and then stating they intend to kill again in just a few hours. Because that is exactly what happened to a group of online gamers who found themselves in a race against time to catch a killer they thought was their friend. It was July 19th... Oh, sorry. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Man, I'm, I'm doing such a good job with the case. So it was July 27th, 2019, when a small group of gaming friends um, received a message in their shared Discord. Why did I why did I put it up there already? I don't know. Um, so this group of friends, let's just let's just rewind. Let's just rewind. July 27th, 2019, a small group of gaming friends um, received a message in their shared Discord server. The message was from one of the members who went by the username Manaz. And the moment everyone read it, they felt their blood turn cold. This is what he wrote. Quote, I've just slaughtered my entire family and will most likely spend life in jail if I manage to survive. I hope I made you laugh at one point or another. I hope you remember the good times. I will miss you all. End quote. Heavy stuff. So quickly, you know, whoever read the message was very confused, very concerned. They, were, they weren't sure what they were looking at. Is this some kind of a joke? Is this some trolling? Like, what is this person trying to do, right? Like, what, what is Minas trying to do? So another user, Ayub, uh, not believing what he just read, responded with, uh, with just this. Nani, which stands for what in Japanese. Nani, I just woke up. And then in that moment, he thought that this must be just Manaz's weird sense of humor and just some really, really strange joke. Um, he had decided to pull out of the blue and then, but then Manaz sent another message. I'm sorry. Do you want the pics? Yep, you're seeing this right. So, <sighs> okay. I'm sorry, this case was pretty heavy too. So like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to just stick to my notes and I'm trying to like not, uh, you know, not let my mind, let my thoughts like race in that direction. But it was pretty, it was pretty gruesome. Also, Melissa, thank you so much for being a member for one month. Congratulations. He made himself get caught or something. Well, he confessed, confessed on a public, well, I mean, on, on their group Discord server. Uh, also, Jose, thank you so much for super chat and also for the other one, because I saw that you also sent a, another super chat earlier today. Uh, looks like your tongue tied today. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> A little bit, just a tiny bit. Okay, so he asks, I'm sorry, do you want pics? 
And then Menaz proceeded to send a series of shocking photos allegedly showing his family members lying lifeless on the ground, drenched in blood, with their throats slit. The first photo um, showed what looked like Menaz's mother, Mumtaz, and then the second photo showed his grandmother, both with their throats slit, both covered in blood and presumably dead. So Ayub, uh, the friend, didn't want to panic just yet. He simply didn't want to believe that this was real, so he responds to Menaz. Quote, that's not your family, but Menaz was very adamant that it was real and simply replied with, it is. Another member of the server responded at 6.59 a.m. with, quote, I mean, if that's true, why did you do it? End quote. And then followed with, quote, it is another troll. End quote. You know, believing that Manaz was trying to just scare them with these fake photos and this was not real, this was not his family. But to prove that his claims are real, Manaz then uploaded a selfie holding a bloody knife. Now, the whole group found themselves in an impossible situation because right now they were the sole witnesses to a homicide. But because they were just online friends and never really met in, in real life, they didn't really know each other's real names. Like, they weren't sure, like, if Menaz was Menaz's real name or if it was just a username. Uh, they had very little information to first prove that the photos and the homicide were real and then pinpoint it to a specific location as well as identify the killer. Despite the fact that they were online friends for half a decade, shared the same server in a game called uh, Perfect World. This is a Chinese, I believe Chinese uh, online multiplayer game. Um, as well as, you know, they were in the same Discord server for just as long, half a decade, five years. They didn't know much about their lives outside of the internet space. The few things that they did know about Menaz was that he was a Canadian, a university student with a passion for gaming and that he was a little bit of a troll but for the most part the trolling was kept very lighthearted. Um, however, they also noted that Menaz changed over the last year because his jokes and comments got darker and more extreme. Um, sometimes like at one point they got really like racist and threatening. Uh, still people generally brushed it off as internet drama people insult you know like people insult others on a daily basis on the internet but that's just that that's all just talk right but at some point Menaz's behavior and here you see his comments in a game uh so his behavior and insults uh targeting especially like muslim people and islam in particular got so extreme uh that he gained like it gained him a ban from the perfect world void server so the the shared perfect world uh game server citing his comments as inexcusable inappropriate and you know like he shouldn't be here if this is what he what he's gonna how he's gonna behave but going back to the crime and the day of the murders members of the discord server tried stalling him because at this point in the conversation, he still hadn't killed his sister and father. Like, he reveals it. He revealed that he only killed his grandmother and mother, and he's still waiting for his sister and father to come back home because they weren't home. Um, so, you know, like, his online friends wanted to make sure that he doesn't go offline, that he stays in the chat and keeps talking, because maybe that way they can, you know, calm him down, um, you know, understand his motives as, you know, as uh, as weird as, as it sounds like they try to like, okay, understand his motives and get, you know, as much information out of him as possible, which could then allow them to find out his exact location and, and inform the local authorities about what he's done. But then at 9.45 a.m. Menaz texted, quote, I know I'm a pathetic coward subhuman. I'll be turning myself in. And one of his friends replied, quote, I never thought you were. There is still no book to life uh, or a scale for people. If you felt that way, then it was majorly what you thought you saw through others. Why did you choose murdering them, though? 
That's when Menaz dropped another bombshell. I've been planning this for three years. And this actually reminded everyone of an incident in the past that happened like several, several months ago, uh, prior to the murders. Somewhere along the, you know, like the insults, the extreme kind of comments, Menaz um, started mentioning his plans to kill his family. Like he started kind of mentioning it here and there, which obviously like the other users found concerning, but, you know, but at the same time, they weren't sure if this is just trolling, if this is just him having like just making these dark jokes for, for no reason to like, you know, to get a shocked reaction. And one of the members actually said, um, said this, quote, When he started saying he would kill his family, I think most people like me thought of it as another weird dark joke. Even when he attached a date to when he would do the gruesome act, I just thought he wanted to make it even darker and then troll everyone on the date he said. End quote. But as it turns out, it was a very real plan. And in his message at 9.54 at 9 a.m., Menaz went on, a, on this, like, rant explaining what exactly pushed him to commit the crime. And this is what he said. Quote, I started skipping uni the first year I entered. It was for mechanical engineering. Believe me, if I could, re believe me, if I could rewind time, I would. But after failing half my subjects, I had to repeat my courses. It is here in second semester I started getting depressed, became an atheist, and ultimately created this plan. So for three years, I've been telling my parents to go, I go to uni when actually I was just hanging out at the mall four days a week. The mall is on the same route as my uni. I told my parents that my classes weren't that long, so I would just chill at the mall from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, while also going to community gym. I did this because I don't want my parents to feel the shame of having a son like me. I choose to kill them instead of myself out of cowardness. Due to me being an atheist, I believe that is the only life we get. I know I might sound confusing, but what's done is done, and what had been planned has been concluded. I'm sorry if this makes you upset. Please try to remember the good times." End quote. Damn. I don't have enough boost for this. This is pure horror. Oh, it is. And it's it gets worse. If failed college semesters too, I failed col college semesters too, but I didn't go psycho killer over it. Yeah, like the his reasoning was very right, like very strange. He was just he was saying like he admitted, oh, I'm a coward, I'm not gonna take my own life. I'm gonna instead kill my family so that they will never find out that I never graduated, I never went to college, I never, like, I failed my subjects, and um, mind you, like, I'm gonna get into it a little bit more. He was going not to, like, yeah, he wasn't going to the college that they, their, his parents thought he was. Like, they thought he was going to a different school. He was going to a completely different school because he couldn't get into the, the one that they thought he did. And then... And then it was like he, yeah, like he failed his subjects, he dropped out, he was just gaming, and and at one point it got to the graduation, because the next day, like, I, I, I think the next day, the following day, so July 28th was supposed to be graduation date, uh, day for that college, and obviously he wouldn't be there because he's not a student anymore, and he decided to off his family. My guy is going insane. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Uh... It's like a certain Chinese man who claimed to be Jesus' bro Jesus's brother and failed an um, academic test and started the uh, Taiping Rebellion in the 1800s. Oh, I didn't know about that. See? Didn't know about it. Is it? Is... Wait. Which one? Wait. Who, who was it? Um, okay. He did this to stop his parents from finding out he never went to college. That's not a good reason on, this, on his part. No, no, no. And he kind of said it... Like, in a weird way, he admitted that, hey, this is only because I'm a coward and I don't want to face my family, you know, being ashamed of me, so... <laughs> this is a great idea. I am just gonna... I'm just gonna kill everyone because... I don't know, like, I don't want to face them, 
you know, I, I don't want to tell them that I never went to college. I don't want to see the shame in their eyes. In that case, like, in which means I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, like, get rid of them before I have to tell them. Crazy. Messed up. Oh my god. I, I cannot begin to, like, ugh. it's beyond my understanding. Okay, so let me just explain this, the whole thing in, in detail, because I said, like, I would explain the, the whole situation. Like, this message, this, right, like, this long rant, this long message in detail, I'm gonna just explain what he's talking about. So, with Bangladeshi roots, because his family, the Zaman family was from Bangladesh, uh, they immigrated to uh, Toronto, Canada, filled with dreams of a bright future. Uh, their journey began in Scarborough, and through hard work, they accumulated wealth. They were pretty wealthy, actually. Um, they moved to a spacious home in Markham. Uh, as the eldest child, Menaz was kind of burdened with uh, expectations from his parents, um, similar to his sister um, uh, Melissa, I think I believe that's her name. How do you pronounce it? I'm sorry if I I'm, I apologize if I mispronounced it. Uh, so, the sister Melissa was kind of the rebel child. Like Manaz was the one who was calm. Manaz was the one who was like, oh, the eldest. So, um, the parents were like having a lot of expectations, and uh, you know, unlike. Melissa, like, he was pretty reserved, he was, uh, forging, he was very, like, he had a special bond with his mother, and he, most of the time, like, he didn't, like, you know, his sister just wanted to go out, his sister wanted to experience things, like, she, she didn't want to be, like, oh, you know, just following her, their parents' expectations, and Menaz was the one who was just, like, okay, they put their hopes and their, you know, dreams into him, like, oh, he's gonna be an engineer, he's gonna be the, the pride of our family. But he also, at the same time, like, turned to uh, the world of video games, um, and, you know, like, the where Discord communities also became his sanctuary. Uh, he just felt the stress, and the Daman household was a... was a family with, like, a lot of ambition, uh, where, you know, academic and professional milestones were the benchmark of success. That's what they... You know, that's what they were focusing on, like, oh, if you're not successful, if you're not, if you didn't, like, graduate from college, like, you can't be considered successful. Uh, well, you know, Melissa dream dreamed of, um, you know, carving out a career in uh, neurosurgery. She, she still had, like, Melissa was still, like, okay, she didn't want to uh, follow exactly what their parents, like, her parents wanted. She still wanted to be a neuro neurosurgeon which is super fucking impressive, but at the same time, she wanted to experience life a little bit more. Um, Manaz wanted to become an engineer. However, the pressure from his parents to excel, coupled with this need for personal space, um, it drove Manaz deeper into his virtual life and deeper into um, depression. And then the chasm between his digital persona and life struggles grew as he misled his family about atten attending York University, uh, whereas in reality he was attending Seneca Community College because he couldn't get into the York University. Uh, but even there he was not an outstanding student. So again, he was not, like he thought, well, he knew he wasn't meeting his parents' expectations because they wanted him to be in the York University and to excel in his classes, but he wasn't doing any of that. So instead, you know, instead of con confronting the truth, uh, Menaz chose to hide everything and lie for as long as he could, uh, sinking deeper and deeper into this, into this fabricated life. And he soon decided to abandon his university education altogether. When he started failing classes, he was just like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop out. I'm just gonna, but I'm gonna keep lying about going to university, right? And he would be shifting his whole attention, his whole life uh, to video games instead. At this point, uh, Menaz's Discord friends are running out of time to try to stop Menaz from killing his sister and his father. Uh, they are still unsure if the whole situation is real, uh, if the photos of his mom and grandma are, you know, dead or authentic. So they decide to Google image reverse search and confirm whether the photos can be found anywhere else on the internet. And they get zero results. The pictures are very real. Then, at 11.32pm, Menas sent another 
spine chilling message. Quote, no, I killed mom and granny so far, waiting for sister in five minutes and then dad in one hour. I mean, by this point, like they didn't have information about him, about his location, so it was too late to save his sister because only several minutes later, Manaz sent a picture of Melissa slain in the same way as his mother and grandmother in order to provide proof that the three women were in fact the members of his family again like Menaz included this this photo that I showed before uh, the photo of the whole family together uh, in which they appear to be cutting a birthday cake so the users had another hour left because before uh, Menaz's father met the same fate as the rest of his family oh dear god I, I can see the chat just like what the fuck is going on did he want to be an engineer or was it uh, what his parents told him? I think, I think like partially, like I, I'm not sure exactly, but I think most of it was like his family's expectations. Uh, so at the beginning he was, he thought this is what he wanted to, but then, you know, like he wasn't, it wasn't what he expected and he wasn't really like good in, you know, excelling in his classes. So, you know, like he didn't seem to be in the end, like at the end of the day, he just realized like oh i'm not actually good at this so he was just trying to push through he was just trying to meet the parents expectations but then when he failed he was just like okay um i can't tell them uh, yeah so another user uh john created a separate group chat for everyone active excluding Minaz, obviously like a separate group chat to try to figure out his location to save Menaz's father because they still had some time and this is what John said quote I just added whoever was active and I felt could help end quote um end quote we tried to reach someone who lived in Canada or can contact the police end quote and then they got another discord notification that Menaz sent another picture and sorry the picture was of this middle-aged man with his throat slit so it was his father now the group of 10 internet sleuths 10 gamers had to work together to make sure that Menaz is apprehended as quickly as possible uh, see there was a concern that he wasn't done with his killing spree after the massacre, after the massacre of the Zaman family, one of the users asked Menaz, quote, what will you do with the rest of your time now? At this point, the action is done, end quote. You know, referring to the time he's got left until the authorities found him. But Menaz's reply raised some very serious red flags. He says, quote, quote, um, eat junk food, visit my ex-girlfriend, drink, smoke. I've never drank alcohol or a cigarette, which I assume he means smoke. Um, that one part, visit my ex-girlfriend, especially stood out to everyone. Uh, because, you know, could it be that she was his next target, that he was going to do something to her as well? So, in his earlier messages, when people asked him about his girlfriend, he claimed that he had broken up with uh, said girlfriend, quote, so long ago because he, quote, didn't want her to be associated with any of this. Yet, why would he want to visit her after killing his entire family? Like, what is the, the point in that? So the group again committed to tracing the IP address which is a distinct marker for internet connected devices potentially revealing the kind of approximate geographical like geographic uh, location linked to Menaz's account and in the meantime Menaz started talking about potentially moving the bodies like he went on this weird rant he started talking about um, moving the bodies to a different room or a different location and mentioned wanting to take quote maybe one last group picture end quote, 
with the now dead family members. He was seriously considering taking a group photo with the bodies. Um, I don't think he did that. I don't. I didn't see anything about it in in any of the articles. Um, doesn't seem so. Like it seems like he just took the photos of like the ones that he posted earlier. What is wrong with this man? I know. I know. I listen. This case is just. It gave me. Um, uh, I mean. I'm pretty sure everyone who was sitting at the computer at their computer and like trying to figure this out and like everyone in that group chat was just like their hearts were racing they were super stressed because they're just like what the fuck is happening we just like we just witnessed this quadruple murder and we couldn't stop it we were trying so hard and we couldn't stop it and we were trying like now we have to now it's also race against time because we don't know if this guy is gonna actually like go to his ex-girlfriend and kill another person so we have to find out where exactly does he live before he leaves his house we gotta keep him inside we gotta keep him you know talking in this group chat because that means like okay he is still possibly here he's still you know talking to us he's still busy maybe we can change his mind maybe you know like we can actually get the information finally get him to either turn himself in or tell us where he's at so that we can turn him in so the group tried their best to get the right ip address and you know, pinpoint the correct location, but uh, their progress was very slow. Uh, they then contacted Perfect World's voice service administrator to, you know, like pleading for help. Uh, the admin tracked the IP address from the game and the Perfect World forums to an address in New Brunswick, uh, but that was not actually the right location. And after hours of their collective efforts, they came up with an idea to get the IP address for, from Menaz's Skype account, uh, and this led them to the greater Toronto area. One of the group members, Bianca, was actually absolutely shocked and flabbergasted by this result because she lived only 12 kilometers um, away from this location. Uh, so here's the thing, even though you know, even though they had narrowed down this the location um, to this general area, they still needed the exact address because without it, police wouldn't be able to find uh, find the you know Menas quickly. Uh, they couldn't like report it because they'd be like, okay, he is in the Greater Toronto area. This happened, and they'd be like, the police be like, oh, hey, like what do we do about it? We don't have a an address. Like this is gonna take hours to find out like where where he's at. Uh, moreover. Right now, Menaz was still kind of like calmly chatting with everyone, which means he wasn't really going anywhere. He was focused on this on this group chat. Um, so they thought, you know, if he finds out that we're tracing his address, we're trying we're trying to track him down and reporting it to the police, he might try to escape. Like that's why they're they're just trying to kind of like oh divert his attention, just asking him about his motives, asking him about like random stuff. They're trying to like not really give it away that they're tracking him down. Fortunately, uh, luck was on their side because following the murders, Menaz suddenly started messaging everyone requesting their email addresses so that he could send them money through PayPal for some reason. I don't actually know what his motive was. Like he was saying something like, oh, I've sent money to people before and I want to, you know, I've already sent a lot of money to people. I want to just share my money and, you know, I want to send you guys some more. Like, I I just want to send you guys some money too because, like, you're my friends in, in this Discord server, right? Uh, trying to stall him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, what? Why? So, this is actually, that was actually luck because, um, so the, one of the members, Bianca, the one that I mentioned before, the one that was like very close to uh, the general location, right? Like 12 uh, kilometers away. She immediately checked, like when he sent her money, she checked her PayPal account, hoping that, you know, the account, Menaz's account has an address attached. Lo and behold, it did. Um, the, the account had a home address, which lined up with the IP address search. So she immediately called the police and passed all the information uh, she and her friends gathered over the course of their, you know, investigation into the early morning hours on Sunday, July 28th. And she later said, quote, I managed to sleep at 6 a.m. after calling cops sometime between 3 and 5, end quote. And then another quote, 
I came back online around 11 a.m. and later on in the day noticed the articles were starting to show up about him getting arrested and was relieved. End quote. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't say end, end quote. <laughs> Hopefully she locked her doors. I mean, yeah, well, she was she was 12 kilometers. Oh, God, I can't say kilometers for some reason. Uh, but yeah, she was she was like, you know, like she wasn't exactly like next to his home or anything, but you know. Uh, hey, Zing Boy, hi. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is my first stream. I hope you like it. I hope you enjoyed the, the case. Enjoy, you're enjoying the case. I mean, as much as, I mean, can you really enjoy any of these cases? I think every time I cover a case, I'm just scared. I'm just, I just have an epiphany. I just realize like, oh my God, this is another fear unlocked. This is another thing to be scared of, you know, online people online friends because do you really know them do you know any of these people if you haven't met them in real life if you haven't like really gotten to know them in real life do you know anyone on the internet not no not really you guys don't know me you know who knows one day i might send you a picture of a potato with a butt how are you gonna handle that i don't know it's gonna be even even worse um i know you yay new fear unlocked as always. True crime really is true crime, huh? Yeah, like, I, I think every time I cover a case, I think that, hey, it's good to know. Like, on one hand, okay, well, now I know what to avoid. Now I know, like, there's this new form of danger that I maybe wasn't aware of. Like, oh, okay, that's how this person tricked this other person and to harm them. Uh, okay, I, I know what to watch out for. But at the same time, I'm just like... Damn, there's another thing to watch out for, you know, there's another form of danger, there's another situation that I have to avoid, there's another thing I have to be scared of. Um, yeah, it's kind of, that's a little bit discouraging, like it discourages me from ever going outside. Uh, why do you want us scared of the butt potato? Because it's terrifying. Fear, fear the potato. Um, <laughs> Will it at least be seasoned? Sure. <laughs> sure. No! It's gonna be unseasoned potato. Unsalted pretzel. I will send you a picture of an unsalted pretzel. That's gonna terrify you. Um, people are stranger than fiction. Yeah, like... Uh, yeah, like, uh, I think people are more terrifying than fiction, right? Like, than any horror movie. Like, I don't... I don't really... Yeah, like, horror movies are scary, obviously. But I think... I think I'm, like... My heart isn't racing as much like when I'm watching a horror movie compared to like when I'm watching a true crime documentary. Honestly, like when I'm watching a true crime documentary and it's like there's the suspense and there's and those are real events. I'm just kind of like shit. Um, but yeah, you know, unlocking new fear every week with Sona. Hey. I think it's scary. You know, like I think I think it's scary. okay. We're gonna we're gonna talk about it. Like I'm gonna go on a rant after I finish the case. Um, but let's get back to the case. Okay, so obviously, like, as Bianca said, she was relieved to see that um, police, like, articles started appearing on, on the internet about Menaz's arrest and about, like, this whole situation, so she was relieved. Um, but when police arrived at the Zaman residence, they discovered the four bodies inside, the, they discovered the bloodbath and promptly arrested Menaz Zaman. Uh, he was just... Like, he was just hanging out in, in the house. He was just playing games. He was just chilling. He was just taking a nap. It was really weird. And his last message in the group's Discord server was this. Quote, the police are here. Goodbye. End quote. Menaz was initially charged with four counts of first-degree murder. Autopsies revealed that Zaman had struck each of his family member in the head, uh, presumably with a crowbar, before slashing their throats. In se September 2020, uh, Menas pleaded gu guilty to uh, three counts of um, yeah, first-degree murder and one count of uh, second-degree murder, actually. The Crown Attorney and the Defense uh, both requested that Zaman be subjected to 25 years of parole ineligibility for the first-degree uh, murder charges uh, to be served, served concurrently and an additional 15 years for the second degree murder charge uh, to be served consecutively. The 
judge concurred with the this sentencing and the judge the, the judge said quote the betrayal of trust involved in these crimes is enormous mr zaman executed four unsuspecting family members in their own home it defies understanding that while his mother and grandmother lay upstairs in their own blood mr zaman played video games and napped to pass the time apparently untroubled as he lay in wait to slay his sister and father in the same manner. No, Jesus. And then, in November 2020, Menaz was sentenced to life in prison without the parole eligibility for 40 years. In an earlier court session held in October of that year, Menaz presented his statement to the court, uh, saying this, quote, I would like to just apologize to everyone uh, to anyone I have impacted negatively with my actions, especially to the people who knew my family, friends and loved ones who I know could have never seen something like this from me happening. I am sorry." End quote. And that is it. That is the end of this case. What do you guys think of this? Because I, I have, I absolutely have un unlocked a new fear. Um, that's that's kind of terrifying like what about the other two well the other two no no no. he he murdered four and he had like for some reason i tr i was trying to like find why maybe i just missed it but i was trying to find exactly why did he get like three first degree murder charges and then one second degree murder charge like i'm not sure why why did this, they decided to kind of differentiate one of them um but, you know, the judicial system works in mysterious ways. Uh, they must have seen something that just qualified it as second degree murder. Uh, they always say that I'm betting it's just something all lawyers tell them to say. I mean, uh, yeah, probably, probably like some, I think, I don't know, like I have a, I'm, I'm having like, I, I get the impression that just very few of you know, the criminals actually genuinely feel sorry for what they've done. Like, very very few of those, like, very gruesome murder, um, you know, perpetrators. I don't know, like, to me, it's just, it's just kind of, that's the, that's the, re you know, like, the, the, the reality. Like, oh, very few of them actually feel genuinely sorry. They just, yeah, they just say that in court and they appear to be remorseful and genuinely sorry. To kind of lower their sentence, hoping that it would lower their sentence. Wait, four? Who's the fourth person that died? Yeah, there's mother, grandmother, father, and, and sister. So four of them. Four of them. And he was trying to possibly go visit his ex-girlfriend, um, but didn't. Like, they, the internet gamers uh, stopped him. The, the, in Discord, you know, the Discord users stopped him, so that's good. Uh, the court drawing makes him look like a like a chud. Also, holy shit, I feel like they could have gotten his IP address sooner, damn. I think that they were trying their best. Um, I wonder, like, I just wonder if they had they kind of... Um, no, like, I think they made the right decision. Well, I mean, yeah, like, four people died, so I guess, like, I wonder, like, I just wonder if they had... Um, like, had they sent the messages, the early messages and those pictures to, like, had they reported it to the police earlier, being like, okay, this is happening, had they passed it to, to the police, like, earlier, would it have changed anything? Um, like, would it have made it faster? I don't think so, because there's also, like, you know, the, I don't know, like, police processes cases in weird, like, you know, sometimes it would just take days for them, sometimes faster, I have no idea, like, you know, it's not as easy, I think it's not as easy as we think it is, like, oh, if we you know, in, in like TV shows, like, oh, you pass the information to the police and they act like super quickly. Sometimes it just drags on and honestly could have dragged on. Maybe they just in that moment, moment, like the friends made the best decision they could as in like, okay, we know this person. We've been hanging out with him for five years. We have his trust. Um, we can stall him and we can get his, you know, his information. We also have access, like, right? Like they had access to his accounts kind of thing. Like they could actually track him down, like, you know, at least immediately. Um, because, right, like, some, like, police officers, I think, I think, like, had this case been passed immediately to the police, um, you know, you, there, there has to be some kind of, like, paperwork for accessing 
oh ip address on the server of the game server or something meanwhile like these people could actually go to the admin and plead with him being like okay you know like give us the it's not the legal process right like oh give us the like just let's just do this because this is happening this like horrible tragedy just happened like we have to track him down and with the police like they have to follow the the rules right like the, they have to follow the law so there would be paperwork there would be a whole legal process to obtain uh the ip address or like gain gain access to his accounts and stuff uh at least that's what i think i'm not sure you know like i'm not a professional i'm not a police officer i don't know how these things actually work um i mean i just i just assume that oh it would involve it would likely involve some legal process so it might have you know my it could have like taken much longer than what they did uh i think considering the circumstances that they did their best they the best they could oh yeah like i think they still um let me just turn this on i think the you know his friends just did the best they could they had the imme like immediate access to everything um it does took, um i took a criminal justice class okay okay so that's you know uh so i'm i'm thinking that like i you know the way i'm thinking is is correct right like oh there is legal pro like, there are legal processes involved because there could be like oh you know i don't know like yeah i'm i'm pretty sure there's like legal process to get anywhere um officially like by the police right but these guys are in that server so they were just kind of like okay we have we have access uh and especially in this case he had three years to find help for his increasing depression yet he did not choose to um hold it in and he did not he chose to hold it in and murder his family yeah like that's yeah this part this part i think is is just kind of like the complexity of human mind like of, of his mind like how how did he think this was the best i don't know like the best solution for him like was his depression just that heavy was his mindset like just state of mind that dark like he went he spiraled into such a dark place that he figured you know what like i'm i don't want to face these people i don't want to face them being ashamed of me so i'm gonna i'm gonna just eliminate them instead and and yeah i don't care if i spend the rest of my life in prison i think at the first at first he was kind of planning to turn himself in like in some earlier messages, I think I saw some messages where he's saying like, oh, I'm going to turn myself in, uh, but not yet, right? Because he has to finish the, the job. And yeah, he was he was going on these rants about like why he wouldn't take his own life, uh, which obviously like no one was encouraging him. Like, mind you, I'm just I'm just saying what he wrote in the Discord chat. Like he wasn't when like I, I believe like what, what I saw was that the friends weren't actually you know no one encouraged him to like hey why didn't you why didn't you take your own life why did you murder the family no they were just asking like hey why did you choose to murder your family and and he was like going on these rants like oh because i didn't wanna i was too much of a coward to to take my own life and like oh because xyz um so no one just so we're clear no one encouraged him to take his own life uh no one was actually saying like hey instead of your family why didn't you off yourself right uh, they were just asking like hey you know like what happened what led to it like what you know what were you going through what why like why did you choose to to harm them if that was happening to me i would get help by uh staying in a psych uh, psychiatric hospital uh not for crazy people the kind that helps you get your life back together on the on the right track i mean that's honestly like that's i think that's the right choice to seek professional help if you know that something's happening if you know that you're not in the right uh place mentally um i think the best decision you can make is to seek professional help right because that's that is the that is kind of like the the best choice you can make like okay you know i need to talk to someone who who actually is a professional and maybe they can you know like they can help me get through this well i hope you guys will never find yourself in this kind of situation you will never have to witness this kind of situation or you will never have to witness like you know face um face i don't know like such a dark place in your mind <sighs> the fact that he didn't plead insanity though mistake on his part on his part 
Um. See, actually, like, this is like I get it that it's sort of made like oh, pleading insanity has been made to uh, seem like this way out of prison, right? Like oh, you know, I plead insanity, I'm gonna be in the uh, like psychiatric institution in a hospital, and I'm gonna get out earlier. I can just tell them like oh, I magically recovered and stuff. Actually, there's been study done on it. Uh, I think I mentioned it in my other case, um, the Hannibal of Jolly Bosch. So the, the the Polish guy who uh, murdered, you know, who was trying to like, mur who murdered and then like tried to eat. Well, I mean, wanted, wanted, wanted like was planning to, I don't know why I'm there. I'm just kind of uh, fumbling through words, but um, so he was, he murdered a, uh, a Spanish language tutor like this uh, this lady and he was trying to eat eat her like he was planning to eat her but he didn't but um so during that case in that case like I think I came across this commentary like this article that was talking about insan ple pleading insanity and there was a study done like a bunch of inter like this uh, this person I don't remember who who was it like who I don't remember the name of the the author of the study but he basically talked to a lot of um inmates or a lot of uh like ex-inmates or yeah like well inmates but like inmates who pled insanity and one of them actually told him that before like while he was um in jail you know before pending his trial like just waiting for his trial another inmate like trained him just kind of coached him saying like hey you can just ple plead insanity. You're gonna go to a cushy hospital and you can get out earlier, right? Like, oh, you can plead, you can just, this is how you behave to plead insanity so that they believe you. And he did it, right? He did it. So he was, instead of jail, he instead of prison, he was put in a psychiatric institution and he told the, the author of the, the study that this was like the worst choice he's ever made. This was the worst decision he, he could have made because in the hospital when, like he actually spent more, I think he was, this was some kind of petty crime, like he committed some kind of petty crime and he was sentenced to, um, I believe, like a couple of years in prison, like a year or something like that, like a year in prison, right? But he didn't want to be in prison, so he decided to plead insanity. He's putting, like he gets put in, um, in a psychiatric uh, institution and he spent five years in that hospital. Also like locked up because he couldn't leave, but he spent five years, you know why? Because every time, like, oh, when he, like, he pretended to be, you know, insane, um, he pretended to, to having some mental issues, and then they locked him up in the hospital, and then every time he would talk, he said, like, every time I talked to a psychiatrist, and I tried to talk, I tried to, like, pretend, like, well, not pretend, like, I tried to get, like, I went back to my own normal self, right, like, so he would say, like, oh, I'm feeling better, oh, I'm, oh, I tried to, like, make sure that my room is clean then my psychiatrist would write down like oh compulsively cleans oh this is a sign of psychopathy or you know oh this is a sign of something and they would misinterpret it like misinterpret anything that he was doing like if he engaged socially in the hospital they were saying like oh he's trying to be manipulative he's trying to manipulate other patients this is not a good sign or if he was like he wasn't trying to socialize with anyone else they would say like oh the the doctor would just interpret it as like oh this person the patient is withdrawn like oh the i think they need more therapy and stuff like oh he, he needs to stay here so he stayed there for like five six years um yeah he he couldn't convince anyone anyone who was sane anymore like only it took him like five years so he spent time locked up for five times the his actual initial sentence that he was facing like he could have spent just five years like one year in prison instead he spent like five six years in in a mental hospital uh he may have been advised against it an insanity plea needs to convince the prosecutor an insanity plea has a lot of barriers and tests um kind of prisoners i think can uh, access offline computers yeah see like yeah i think he was advised against it well if anything yeah but that that study was crazy and and you know like the study was talking about like different cases that were very similar and it it go it comes down to uh the fact that you know when you plead insanity it's like you're it's a like it is subjective like when you you know like it is a subjective uh interpretation it is gonna be subjective interpretation of of the psychiatrist 
Like, even if they are an expert, they can only subjectively diagnose you. So, yeah, you know, fuck around and find out. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, you guys, um, that is it for this case. But I just wanted to chat a little bit more, a little bit longer. We did cover another case uh, on, I believe, sat was it Saturday on Patreon? That one was crazy, too. Like, if you guys are interested, if you guys are fans of Breaking Bad, uh, if you guys are fans of Three Body Problem, the Three Body Problem, the new Netflix show, and which is based on a sci-fi novel, uh, we did discuss a case uh, that was pretty fucking crazy. It is connected to the Three Body Problem. It is connected to Breaking Bad. Um, it was insane. Like, the, the scheme, there was, like, an elaborate scheme that was... I don't know, over the top, but then ended with nobody's gonna know that I eliminated all those people. I'm this and I'm the only one standing, the executive that's gonna take over. Like, oh, I'm, a, you know, like I'm the only executive left, so I'm gonna take over the kind. Like, I'm not even spoiling it uh, that much. <laughs> but if you're interested, it was crazy. Uh, Sana, did you look into playing Ghost Trick? Uh, I haven't, I haven't yet. I haven't yet. Like I might, I'm, I'm gonna plan it. Maybe like I can check it out and plan it for next week or like the the, the week after. Uh, I've been playing a lot of uh, Pal World. I I actually got like finally got into Pal World. I just kind of saw people playing it. And I was just like, okay, let me just see what the hype is about. Um, yeah, it's pretty. It's actually pretty addicting. Like addictive. I yeah. <laughs> You played Pal, Pal World, yeah. Like I just, I just started. I just literally started. Uh, so I'm, I'm like at the beginning. I'm just figuring it out. But it's pretty fun. <laughs> it is pretty fun. So I'm gonna keep playing. <laughs> Wait, is that when you, when how uh, companies work? Wouldn't the share, shareholders uh, called up to elect new executives? I don't know. Like his mind was just, it was weird. It was weird. Like this guy, the case was pretty crazy. Uh, like just going back to the case from Patreon. Um, the guy had only vengeance in his mind, you know, on his mind. It was just like vengeance. I need to get rid of all those people. No one ever is going to know. No one, nobody's going to know that it was me. Um, he had this like elaborate scheme, elaborate plan behind it. It was crazy he oh god it was so it was so crazy and like he was an asshole to the very end um and the guy like he i mean yeah it's spoiling a lot it, it probably is but he was in the end like because you know it, it was in china and like chinese government is pretty strict um they sentenced him to death just recently like march 24th they sentenced this perpetrator to death and if you're interested, if you're curious, like why the punishment was so harsh, go to my Patreon. You can check out that case. It was pretty insane. Uh, I mean, my Patreon members can <laughs> can tell you because everyone was just like, what the fuck is happening? Why? Why? How? Why? Why would he think that this is going to work out? Like, how did he? Wow. Like, he went through all the a lot to kind of make certain deaths happen. Um... If there are shareholders, if not, they have no say. Yeah, I'm not sure if there were shareholders. Like, I think it is a... I, I don't think it was like a public company. I think it was a, a, a private company. Because the CEO actually died. Um, yeah, Eric Eric confirms. It was pretty crazy. Uh, but, wait, is that when... Uh, okay, okay. Glad you're having fun. But first Pokemon, now Pal World. Next is Digimon. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> are you beating up sheep and chickens? Oh yeah, I murdered a lot of sheep and chickens. Damn, chickpeas are dead. Chickpeas, I, I, I'm, I'm eating those Pokemon's. Or I mean, pal, pals, pals. Every, yeah, nothing. Not there's, it's nothing. You know, there's no similarity between the two games. Pokemon, pal, pal World, completely different games. Also, Pokeballs, Pal Spheres. <laughs> no, I love I love how it's like similar enough that it's, you know, yeah, it feels like Pokemon. But they made it different enough that it doesn't. That it's like a oh, it's also a survival game and it's also like oh Pokemon with guns. 
Um, it is pre Palmons. Is it Palmons or is it Pals? I think it's just Pals. Uh, hopefully you're having a good day. Hey, Marshmallow, thank you so much. Yes, I'm having a good day, even though like this case, this case just kind of scarred me for life. Uh, it's another fear unlocked, you know, like even if you think you know your discord friends just be careful out there some of them one of them one day might send you a picture of an unsalted pretzel and you will be shocked you will be in deep shock you're gonna be disappointed um and questioning your sanity uh and <laughs> pikachu use ak-47 pal stream maybe i don't know like i'm i'm actually considering like oh maybe Maybe playing Pal World, like if, if my uh, like channel members or or my Patreon members have uh, have Pal World, like we could play together. If if not or not, I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna go hug my family real quick. Yeah, I know, I know. That's how unsalted pretzels work, right? It, it works. It works magic. Suddenly you wanna you wanna hug your friends. You wanna hug your family. Don't worry, salted unsalted pretzel isn't real. Can't hurt you. <laughs> Except you can, because it's real. Uh, pal World should add a um, Mothman Pal. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, you know what? It, it has my vo vote. Yeah, you got my vote for this one. Uh, but yeah, you know, like I've been playing uh, Pal World a little bit. I'm gonna be playing. I'm gonna be taking off, uh, like taking today and tomorrow off. Well, yeah, I guess so. Uh, so I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Uh, there is gonna be a couple of streams. Uh, I might not have a stream on Sunday. Like, true crime stream might be either earlier or later. Uh, because, because I'm going to Japan. I'm just, you know, announcing, uh, announcing. So I'm flying actually on, on Sunday. I will be gone for a couple of days. Well, no, I'm not gonna be gone for a couple of days. I'm, I'm gonna bring my uh, equipment. So I'm gonna stream from Japan. Uh, but, you know, like, because Japan, be careful. Why? Wait, what happened? <laughs> I mean, is it... I'm kind of like, I'm freaked out. I'm a little freaked out because I, you know, the whole situation with Boeing recently, I'm kind of afraid, scared to fly. Uh, I've always been scared to fly, but... Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna... I'm visiting my friends in, in Tokyo. Uh, so, you know, because I lived in Japan for a while. Like, I lived... In Japan for a couple of years and I do have a lot of friends there so like I'm just gonna be visiting some friends uh, in Tokyo for a couple of days and then uh, but I will also be streaming so don't worry like there's gonna be streams uh, the next true crime stream I'll see it might be on Saturday it might be I don't know Monday maybe possibly like I'll try I'll, I'll see but it's not gonna be on Sunday um, most likely did you see the eclipse no Taiwan doesn't have it. <laughs> there is no there is no eclipse in Taiwan. It's just the path like US, Canada, I think that's that's where like the total, the complete and uh, and partial like partial eclipses. Not this time. The next I think the next full eclipse in Taiwan is going to be in like 54 years or something. Like I think it's going to be like 2070. <laughs> I kid you not, like, I actually checked, like, the next, like, total eclip eclipse scene that can be seen from Taiwan is gonna be in, like, 2070. So, um, I will have to wait a little bit. Uh, the part, I think there's gonna be a partial, like, partial eclipse in Taiwan. Seen from Taiwan is gonna be, like, maybe 2030-ish, some, something like that. I think in a couple of years. Uh, <laughs> yep, we gotta be old, for, it's gonna be old for us, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna be, we're gonna be a little old. I have pictures, but they're mostly of the later half I was at work during. Oh, I see. Stay safe, Sona, but more importantly, have fun. Hey, watch out for Kamen Riders in Japan. <laughs> oh no, I got a bit of a video of the eclipse. That's pretty cool. Man, that's cool. Like, I think I've seen, I have seen a total eclipse in uh, Poland. There was, there was definitely one. Uh, like, I've seen one in my life. I think one, yeah, I think it was like one or two, maybe like partial eclipse and then, and then, um, full eclipse, like when I was a kid. Uh, goodbye, good night, and God bless you. Thank you so much, Baxter. Remember that you are loved and not alone. Hey, you guys, remember, remember, you can only unlock your fears with me. <laughs> Every week, unlocking, new fear unlocked. 
Uh, but same to you, Baxter. Hey! When I visit Japan in the future with my uh, future boyfriend, I'm going to be prepared to, just in case I run into one of the urban legends. Always be prepared. Always be prepared. Like Teka Teka and I don't know, scary stuff. So just saying, just be prepared for any, any uh, possibility. For any new fear unlocked. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm gonna be flying on Sunday. Uh, which is, I think, US Saturday. So I'll, I'll see if the true crime stream is still gonna be like Sunday or like Sunday US time or is it gonna be Monday US time. I'll let you guys know. I will definitely be streaming uh, during my, my stay in Japan. Uh, what else? What do we have for this week? Um, I don't have anything planned yet. I'm gonna post the schedule. I mean, I do have some things planned already. I just have to like really like finalize the schedule and and post it i'm gonna post it sometime today uh so just stay tuned uh, you know, keep your eyes open for for the new schedule on twitter and on like in my community tab and that that is it that is it so you guys stay safe out there always lock your doors and windows bear your hexes until the next time bye like now hold on there okay you guys you guys i don't know if you saw it in the like the top that's uh, well, I mean, at the beginning of the of the video but do you guys know what the leanest red meat in the world is can you can you take a guess what is the leanest red meat in the world just a hint it's not it's not a very like it, it's a pretty obscure animal it's not a very usual animal for red meat Fun facts on pretzels? I don't think I have a fun fact on pretzels. Leanest red meat? Yeah. It's ostrich. Yeah, yeah, ostriches. Yeah, Demon Taker got it. Yeah, it's ostrich. It's actually ostrich. You Googled it, didn't you? Yeah, but, uh, yeah, it's ostrich. It's Ostrich is actually not poultry. It's actually red meat, and it's the leanest. Uh, that's, that's it. Also, uh, chat, thank you so much for being a member for 10 months. Hostage time. Uh, what else do I have? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Skin orgasm. That's a thing. It's called, it's actually called frisson. And it's it's this feeling of euphoric chills. Like whenever you get those chills that like, you know, it's kind of pleasant and like your hair kind of stands up, like a hair on your arms or something on your body stands up. Yeah, that's frisson. That's actually, researchers have described the sensation as a skin orgasm, so. Hey, not stopping now. Oh my god, Jose, thank you. Shai Shai, thank you. Sorry for not being in. I died sideways. Good night, everyone. Oh no. Oh no, Shai Shai, thank you so much. Um, what else do I have? Oh yeah, tigers. So, do you, you, you guys know that tigers have stripes, right? Like, they have... But they... It's not only their fur. Uh, tigers actually have striped skin. And it's kind of... Every tiger have like has unique stripes. Uh, it's kind of like their fingerprints. So it's not only the fur. Like when you shave the tiger, their skin is also striped. So it is fingerprints. Hey. Oh wait, that's it. That's it, you guys. Thank you so much again. Uh, stay safe out there. Always lock your doors and windows. And I'll see you the next time.